Okay, I uploaded that morning and had to go straight to my 12 hour shift without sleep. So, how is it do- Oh? Okay, that's interesting. Enjoy the video, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, Okay, so in my last video that was so long you were all probably banging your heads on your keyboards begging me to end it, we glossed over both the entire Bible for context and the seals, trumpets, and angels of plague in their bowls of wrath so that you could be fully informed and ready for a dive on Mr. Beast. I am deeply apologetic if you felt that I was clickbaiting you. However, if that video had been edited even longer, it would have fried my laptop and that couldn't be risked. Also, I did mention that I'd make another for the complete dive on Mr. Beast, but me saying that I'd do a later video probably annoyed quite a few. Keep in mind, the first video was to teach and inform on the whole Bible, but focusing down on revelations. The rest will be my best efforts on research and speculation, but they could potentially fail given how little information there is. Here is a rundown of the videos I have planned out to do alongside the first that's already out. The first, Revelations, was giving a basic overview. The second, Speculation, the comparison to mainly Mr. Beast and only mentioning the other parties where applicable. My third video, Observation, will be on verses and visions from the Old Testament and any new developments. It will also end this little slot saga oh don't pretend like you're all upset and will miss me researching is my favorite pastime and i thrust my likes onto all of y'all without your consent be mad and run <laughs> when will she ever learn quit with the antics this is serious this time i need to stay on script and keep my summaries short so just like before I'll make a Google Doc and throw every source link into it for your credibility pleasure so that I don't miss or lose any. Prepare your feastable offerings now and pray to the We Have Willy Wonka's Factory at Home Gods because things are about, about to get, get dicey. dicey. The very opening beast will be on the dragon. Opening up with the sign in heaven, becoming the fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads ten diadems. If we go off something important, heads and horns each represent a different person. Then we have to figure out why diadems are mentioned. The sea beast makes that easy by having actual crowns on all ten horns. Let's get into the woman for a second. And as a warning and disclaimer, remember, this is based off a study and speculation on a book that has been rewritten over 30,000 times. None of this is likely to be what actually happened. She represents Israel. The garland of 12 stars are the 12 tribes, and she gives birth, is the story of Jesus Christ. All of her hiding is representing Israel being split apart and the fact that it is reformed and no longer afraid of fighting people is troubling because it means the doomsday clock is ticking. The moon and sun simply signify the hour the Messiah had been born. You can think of midnight as the hour based on the sun being her clothes and only the moon is out. So that connection is with Jesus being born at night. Now, remember, a war in heaven had broken out. The dragon and his angels Thank you so much for not including such an important number, St. John, you twat. Or if you did, I apologize and turn my rage on to whoever took it out. Now, let me cut into this segment by mentioning a very important fact. 
Satan is one of God's beloved children that he trusts to take care of those taking punishments in hell. He is not an evil being. He is following orders and is intensely completely loyal to God. This war he starts is likely because he wants to save this planet and prevent its destruction. But he is most likely the only angel that was created with free will and that made him unable to handle the immense burden of dealing with all the twisted, demented, and tormenting of evil people. He is one of God's most trusted and beloved creations, and he does not like the idea of being told he is wrong. So when Satan finds out about his horrible plan to destroy the world, he takes action by first getting rid of the thing attempting that starts this morbid bell of doom ringing. The doomsday catalyst. The only son born from the womb of a virgin, Jesus Christ. Thwarted at every turn, desperately trying to keep his creator from realizing what he is doing, he obeyed and continued testing and tormenting man, all the while agonizing on what he could do to save the planet and people and creatures he loves. So he decides that before it is too late, he needs support. But while recruiting other angels, the first seal was broken. And the next, and the next, oblivious, because one of his plans was finally succeeding. He didn't notice because he wasn't used to how fast times goes in heaven. Used to the earth's clock, he thought he had plenty of time. But then one day, he noticed something wrong, and so went out of his recruiting to check on the noise he heard. Horror filled him from head to toe. He was too late. People and animals were dying at alarming rates. Millions were extinct. The ocean dying, polluted with blood. The humans he loved so, so much, greedy, lustful to the point the children are affected. This made him snap and cry out in rage. He heard the sounding of the horn of the seven and bellowing that now was the time to act, flew straight at the Almighty to attempt stopping everything right then and there. But his creator had peered into his mind ages ago and only allowed him getting so far in his plan so he would feel accomplished. But Satan wasn't in his right mind and wouldn't listen to God telling him to let it go. Are you not weary of the evilness? I'm going to cleanse this world of that. The large seas made the land so small. We don't need to keep free will either. These topics I can only imagine were covered. But Satan only wanted this world. Tears streaming, rage building, demanding him, the creator, to put it back to right. Begins to go to war. But those he had recruited weren't enough. And since he loved the world so much, he was thrown down onto it and ordered to make the beasts. Heartbroken and numb, he was forced to make beasts with the worst souls and Tartarus. And seeing the endless pain he was causing and the hatred all of man had built for him. He started believing he deserved it. And he listened to his creator and began doing as he said. This is the way I view this story, this book, this supposedly constantly rewritten history. 
I hope that wherever he is, he's able to regain control of himself and not be forced to live like a puppet for his creator. <sighs> shake it off, guys. Shake it off. Now, on to the full details of the dragon. We know seven heads and ten horns add up to seventeen people. The people that are represented by the heads are people who are actively speaking and so possibly hold trusted positions. The diadems possibly mean they aren't in positions that can do everything they want to. Ten horns stand for people in powerful positions, but are mostly for show and don't have control over their actions and their positions. The heads can at least speak. The horns are in the back, literally, and are not seen as they work behind the curtains to make the heads shine. Now, for Mr. Beast to be part of this dragon, possibly he'd be have to be close party with Satan himself. But the dragon is for attacking Israel and any followers of God and gaining authority, not performing miracles which Mr. Beast is attempting. So even though it's a plausible theory, he would need two, one, show extreme hatred towards anyone that has religion. Any religion. Two, be anxious and determined to gain authority and willing to do anything to get it. Three, fear would be his main go-to weapon. Four, he needs to be willing to give all that authority to the beast of the sea and be happy about it. No greed at all. Five, he'd have to be a Satan supporter, not a worshiper. These are very, very different things. These are the boxes that he'd have to check. If he was anything, he'd be a head with a diadem. He's too popular to be in the shadows and is too well known to allow his ego to act behind the scenes. If he's part of the Red Dragon, a key thing here is he could possibly be one of the angels instead of a head or horn. Yes, the actual being that followed Satan. It is possible that if he continues behaving erratically, maybe it means he's trying to cheer Satan up by making us dancing monkeys, not realizing the harm he is causing in the process because, again, the angels weren't designed with free will. That's my theory. And this is the checklist that he would need to fill out. Hey, don't get mad I started with an appetizer I liked the theory of first, alright? We're just getting started. With no time to waste, let's get in to the second one. The one I dubbed the musk as. And also believe Mr. Beast could be as well. The two horns like a lamb that speaks like a dragon. So this is going to be sounding a bit rambly, so bear with me. Two horns stand for two people, hence why my original theory could still stand. While Musk creates the tech, Mr. Beast makes himself as popular as possible and begins performing miracles. And they operate and they open. That's why the horns are on the head. Meanwhile, Trump is possibly either this Lambie's head or one of the heads of the sea beast, which by extension means you'll have to wait for me to reach the sea beast for that complete thought. Maybe they do really often make up the ram. No one really ever mentions its head though, and if it doesn't mention the head, similar to when the body is merely described and nothing further, perhaps it's connected to how much of an influence they are. Hmm. So, lambs are small, and the beast from the sea is stated as big, and the dragon size isn't mentioned? Continuing on with the comparison. Mr. Beast performed two miracles so far, curing blindness and curing deafness. Doesn't matter if it wasn't him doing the actual deed because the world believes it was him that made the miracle possible. That is enough. 
he is also weirdly obsessed with fire. Like, seriously, dude, chill. Not every video needs CGI explosions. So this checklist would be... One, his words need to carry power. Two, voice needs to make him sound trustworthy. Three, he exercises authority of the dragon. That means he needs to know how to rule. Four, he needs to perform great signs or miracles. Five, he needs to be deceiving man. Six, he needs to be making images that can speak. AI, recording for voice boxes on statues and museums, dolls, figurines that can speak, etc. Seven, he'll need to convince people to make figures, art, etc. of the beast from the sea that was mortally wounded. Eight, he'll need to force or coax everyone to get the mark of the beast. Remember, no one may buy or sell without it. That is what will come to be. Nine, do something really big with fire, I guess, or something related to fire. These are the things that he will need to check off to be this beast. The ones he did check off are why I'm wondering if he makes the second horn, since I'm positive Elon Musk is the first. Now, you're probably thinking, we get to the third and final now, right? Well, third, yes, but final? <laughs> No. Finishing my earlier thought, the beast from the sea has seven heads that could stand for multiple people, and the ten crowns are people in power. Ten horns are the people the crowns belong to. The blasphemous name and many animal parts are clues to exactly how powerful these people could be and it could be clues for where they are born but that could be digging too far into it and could be only things people added to make this beast sound cooler so i'll hold my tongue in the coming days so the checklist here is as follows one has to receive power from the dragon. Two, has to be steadfast, headstrong, and trustworthy. Three, one of the people representing him that isn't a ruler yet, very key, is not a ruler yet, has to be mortally wounded and survive. Four, he will make war with any remaining believers, any religion. Five, he is multiple lingual, either one person with every language or all world leaders make up the Antichrist, is my assumption. It has to be either one person with all the languages or multiple people with all the languages combined. Six, he needs to make the entire world want to follow him. I am going to admit here, I only speculated Trump is the Antichrist because of his head wound. If he begins saying it could have killed him and that it was deadly and mortal, that will still only be a suspicion. This is one of the few things untouched 
and all the times they'd rewritten this book. The Antichrist could be multiple people or only one. I cannot make it out. This makes up the end of those three checklists and comparisons. Now, to get into a full explanation of the fourth beast, you'll have to stay on my channel for one more rambling bit of drivel because I found out something extremely shocking that I had always glanced at before but never fully understood. It's kind of embarrassing since I spent nine years on it, but that's simply because I was stumped on who it was with. And I can't assist you to speculate this time. Fifth Trumpet The Locust from the Bottomless Pit Keep Bottomless Pit in mind. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and the smoke arose out of the pit, like smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of gar God on their foreheads, and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like a woman's hair, and teeth were like a lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots, with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and their stings were in their tails. Their power was to hurt men for five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. And don't worry, this gets even stranger. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship here. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread on the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. They will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire produces from their mouths and devours their enemies. If anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as desire. This is about the two witnesses. The witnesses killed. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. Did he catch it? When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. That beast was not mentioned in the fifth seal, the locust from the bottomless pit. Meaning he came out secretly. Not even John saw him leave too distracted by the locusts and the angel. John did not, St. John is who I'm talking about, did not see another emerge. We have a fourth beast here. It was only one line, but the fourth beast is from the same bottomless pit as the locusts.
and there is only one thing to check off here for it. One. Must kill the two witnesses. I have a page up here. And this page shows every English version change on Revelations 11, 7. There are probably some out there that have seen, like, they'll scroll through this whole thing and be like, okay, this version's missing, not a credible source. I'm using it as a video so that you can scroll through it yourself and see. I'm sh try all I'm trying to do is show how even though it's changed, one thing doesn't, and that it comes up from either a hole, the pit, or the abyss, but most often used is the bottomless pit. And as a researcher, that is pretty conclusive that he came up out of the locust bottomless pit. I will let you scroll for a while or watch it scroll for a while. Go ahead and skip to this point of the video to skip the rest of them. We do not get anything more than that. And I don't have a clue on who the witnesses could even be. Are they even people? The beasts aren't real beasts, so will St. John and St. Peter be coming down? That could be far-fetched, but I wouldn't put up past God to make a spectacle like this for entertainment. Keep an eye out with me, guys. Guys, I appreciate your support and acceptance for my crazy hobby and obsession. If you enjoyed this video or hated it as much as the worst crimes on Nux's list, let me know below. And I will welcome any and all debates, as long as you are only after me, and not bullying those that agree, disagree, or are neutral about these research speculations of mine. Thank you, Mr. Nux. You asking for these types of videos make me feel confident in posting something I deeply enjoy researching. I am truly happy to be of assistance. I won't be doing any puns today, don't worry. I'll be leaving you alone now with all the information, so let me pull the crazy out of y'all. It's mine, all mine, you don't get to keep any of the crazy- <laughs> 
I'll catch you all on the flip side. And promise me you'll stay safe out there, you cheeky buggers. Because this beautiful world, it's only going to become more dangerous from here on out. Until its beauty is only in all of our degraded memories. Until everything becomes a nightmare and then it'll be gone. We'll all be gone. The planet either deserted or completely destroyed. Either reshaped into this god's new toy or tossed in the, the bin. I wonder sometimes if that's what happened to Mars. But that's something I can figure out later, if I ever get the time. It took nine full years to be confident to share my perspective on this subject. And if anything did happen, the citizens probably just upped and skedaddled out of the solar system for a different star. Probably was because they killed their ozone in experimentation. Anyways, peace out.